The new RNC is rapidly transforming into a leaner, meaner, Trump-dominated machine. Senior leadership has been almost entirely replaced or reassigned. Dozens of lower-ranking officials, including state directors, have either been fired or told to reapply for their jobs. The Washington Post reports its Bank Your Vote mail-in voting initiative is now out. The New York Times reports it's also shuttering its nationwide network of community outreach centers, once a fixture of the party's efforts to attract minority voters. What's now in is a brand new election integrity unit led by former OAN anchor and election denier Christina Bob, who joined the Trump campaign legal team last year. Joining us now, Washington Post national correspondent Phil Bump and New York Times politics reporter Maya King. So, Maya, you first uh, reported on all this RNC stuff. Um, can we talk first about Christina Bob? She was one of the lawyers, the one who signed a document saying that there were no classified documents left at Mar-a-Lago. That was not true. There were classified documents left at Mar-a-Lago. How did she get put in charge of this election integrity unit at the RNC? Well, I think this is all a part of a strategy on the part of particularly the Trump campaign to replace many of the people who were working at the RNC in the past with loyalists, people who Trump and his allies know uh, will follow his directives, particularly as it relates to this ongoing storyline about the 2020 election. And I think it also sends a message about what we can expect uh, from this iteration of the RNC for the next few months heading into the 2024 presidential election. Uh, the message coming from this Republican Party will, one, be hand in hand with the message of the Trump campaign. I think they will largely be un united as sort of one body. Um, and a lot of the uh, comments and, and false claims about what happened in 2020 um, and about election integrity, I think we can expect to continue now uh, hearing that coming from the RNC and the Trump campaign as the general election uh, kicks into full gear. So, Phil, does this mean that regardless of what happens in 2024 in November, Donald Trump is going to, to say that he won? I don't know if he's going to necessarily say that he won. I think he probably will certainly say that of certain states. I mean, we remember after 2016, even when he obviously won, he won more electoral votes. He became president of the United States. He got to the White House and immediately started elevating these false conspiracy theories about how, uh, you know, uh, immigrants without documentation voted in California, and that's what made California go to Hillary Clinton, or that in New Hampshire people bust in from Massachusetts. He always says this. He, he is very defensive about the idea that he might not be successful in some of these states. Uh, and so, yes, I think it is going to be the case that he will make those claims. Whether or not it means that he says he won the presidency uh, remains to be seen. How significant is it to have these changes at the RNC to, to kick out senior leadership, to install a, a, a new head, to put Christina Bob in this position, to have Lara Trump, his daughter-in-law, as deputy? How significant are the changes and, and what will they mean for the general election, Phil? Well, I think there are two ways in which it's significant. The first is that in 2016, Donald Trump very effectively sort of uh, railroaded the party. He, he got the party, this this powerful institution for decades, you know, more than a century, he got it to do what he wanted to have happen, which is became, a, became president. He wasn't in control of the party. He just managed to, to, to use it to get that to happen. Since then, he's taken it over. I mean, he very literally took it over with this change in leadership. You know, there are other manifestations of it, the fact that, you know, Kevin McCarthy was ousted, that Mitch McConnell stepping down. There are all these ways in which he has taken over the Republican Party uh, and, and uh, consolidated power over it. Uh, and I think that what that suggests is that the any extent to which the party may have been trying to run a traditional campaign and been cautious about crossing the lines prior to 2020, I think that's out the window. I think it's very clear with Bob, who wrote this entire book, elevating these, these conspiracy theories about election fraud. With her there in particular, and with Laura Trump as co-chair of the party, I think there are going to be no cautions uh, in place at the party against you. Um, it's, it's interesting, Maya, that they'd be shuttering their community outreach uh, centers for outreach for minority voters, especially in this moment when Gallup data shows that Democrats are in danger of really losing a quite, a, quite a few black and Latino voters, especially men. Um, Republicans, they could vote Republican in 2024, according to Gallup, in numbers not seen since Dwight D. Eisenhower's election in the 50s. Most of that gap closed after 2020. A McDaniel priority, Ron Romney McDaniel, was that was working so well was these outreach centers. So, so why would they close them? 
Well, I think this is, again, part of the trend that, that we're talking about of sort of this replacement with Trump loyalists. And it's not quite clear yet, you know, the who was really working at these community outreach centers, whether they were, you know, whether this was caused by insufficient loyalty to the former president um, is unclear to us. However, we do know that the RNC spent billions of dollars on these community centers and really prioritized minority outreach, racial minority outreach here. And so it was really sweeping and surprising uh, to hear that they were closing these centers that really were a centerpiece of Republicans' outreach, particularly in battleground states. And Michael Watley, the chairman of the RNC, sent a statement saying uh, after this story was published that the uh, community centers will actually remain open. But we don't know yet which community centers, hmm. um, you know, which states, and, and what shape that, that will really take. But I, I say all that to say I think that the Republican Party recognizes that this actually is a very important part of their outreach and is an important part of uh, how they will continue to make inroads with black and brown voters, uh, particularly at the margins. So I think uh, over the summer we will see some form of outreach to uh, black, Latino, Asian, and Native American uh, voters from the Republican Party, whether that takes the shape of actual community center events that we saw in 2022 and even in 2020. Um, I'm not quite sure. You're talking about all that money they spent on those outreach centers. Let me just uh, leave us with this. And when it comes to fundraising, Biden and the DNC have raised $130 million. Trump and the RNC, $65 million. So quite a big fundraising gap there. Uh, Phil Bump, uh, Maya King, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it.